Happy Monday, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. What's going on, fam? Oh, you know. You already know what it is. How's oh, you know what it is. You guys have a good uh, weekend? Yeah, you know, it was, a, it was a nice little weekend. You know, to be honest, I'm just kind of like, we're we're at the we're at the precipice of uh, Gen Con at the end of the week. Mm. Like, I already kind of feel like the year's done as of today <laughs> because like we go in, it's like debates tomorrow's jam packed. Then it's like I do all the big podcasts on Wednesday. Then I go out to Gen Con, come back, Def Con, come back, got a week. Uh, down to Austin for the Out of Bounds Festival, then to Dragon Con, and then at that point we're after Labor Day and we're like a week away from all the, uh, you know, holiday stuff. And if we're gonna go back east, then that's the time we got to do it. And it's like, mm. all right. And then literally as soon as we're back on the other side of 2020, it's like caucuses, primaries. Like, all right, whatever. Just wake me up at election day <laughs> when there's not a million things going on. Mm -mm -mm. Wake you up when October ends. Well, yeah, when when a year and three months from now. <laughs> How about you, Angie? You doing good? Good, good. Shark Week. Shark, Shark Week. Week. Friday, yes, right? Shark Week. Friday. Big, 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 big show. Friday, everybody. That's right. Got to do TMZ last week. I have a Cena interview coming up. All fun. Nice. How was TMZ? TMZ was great. Yeah. Well oiled machine. I go to the studio. They put me in a. I do my thing from a separate section because they have like Harvey and them have their own set thing. So they interview me over camera, but I'm like, you know, 100 feet away. I could open up the door and shout out. Yeah. Uh, I know. I saw that. I was like, why are they having him on the computer? They're super, super, super cool. Super, super nice. Harvey just loves Shark Week. It was fun. It was just a fun interview. It was it's just an easy interview, you know? Yeah. I bet. I bet they make it super easy. I mean, because that's, yeah. I mean, half of TMZ now is doing shows and interviews like that. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was TMZ, TMZ Live, all that, but yeah, so yeah, it was uh, it was fun. CNET, I've got a, Andy Altman of CNET. I've got a really fun segment with him coming up. So. Nice. Pardon me while I eat, everybody. I'm just sure. shoving peanuts in my mouth. <laughs> Rob, here be. Sure. Huh. Hey, Brian. Yo. Getting ready to start weird things here in just a few moments, everybody. Yeah. Did, uh, Andrew, did you watch The Boys? I watched the first two episodes. I approve. It was what, so far, it's been pretty much what I was hoping that thing. I've been following that for like a year or so since they acquired the IP and was really hoping it would be fun and I've enjoyed it so far. Yeah. It's good in spite of its marketing campaign. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, every, I guess every, I wasn't really dialed in on the uh, on the marketing campaign. I like thought the, the trailers and stuff. Uh, I thought the marketing campaign pretty effectively conveyed that uh, the superheroes were all the bad guys. Um, I mean, sure. I just, I, I just remember from maybe I didn't watch all of the trailers. Maybe I'm gonna watch one of them. But I just remember the trailers being like, aren't superheroes actually really, you know, uh, crazy and corrupt? What isn't that cool? Like, I, I like it. It felt like a uh, treating the edginess and and the the, the nastiness of them as like a positive or like that would be oh. a big part, a big better. Yeah, I don't think I was like, like I remember at Comic Con they leaned really heavily into uh, the tagline of "Never meet your heroes," which I thought was pretty clever. It, yeah, I was in New York and they had like one of those like buildings that like ten story buildings that they painted like a full thing on there, mm -hmm. and and everything I saw in New York was like the superheroes of the lasers cutting cutting people in half and murdering people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was you know, it's curious to wonder like. How ad campaigns work on because they ask they test this stuff they get twenty people who are not us you know not and and what do you think and that's the problem sometimes with screenings and stuff is you get twenty people who are not us mm -hmm. and then sometimes with TV shows they end up being aimed for people like us and that's why some stuff just turns out to be complete garbage because it's like yeah no my mom hated it and said it sucked but I love this and you know they think they're somewhere in between it's gonna be a good show but yeah. uh, 
you know, I would say, you know, certain element of it, you'll know what I mean, are extremely derivative of Watchmen. But other than that, uh, I really enjoyed it to its own thing. It's good. It's a, it's a good. Uh, it's also nice yeah. and short. Yeah. Nice short season. And I love Carl Urban. Mm-hmm. You mean Keith Urban? <laughs> Definitely said Keith Urban. <laughs> <laughs> Him too. <laughs> They're all great. All just all the brother all... on the show. <laughs> Champagne Urbana. It's great. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the urban community. <laughs> uh, have, have you watched any of the boys yet, Justin? Not yet. No, uh, no, no, no boys. I mean, I uh, guess you, you have watched a select 15 seconds of it. Oh, I've watched, yeah, I've watched what Brian has been sending me by recording his television <laughs> like he's a, a Snapchat influencer. Recording uh, <laughs> oh. his television and texting it to me. <laughs> oh. so that's all of the boys that I've seen. <laughs> I couldn't fucking believe the, what I was the seeing. possible uh, the the possible uh, influence of Diamond Club. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys uh, ready to show? Andrew, you good? I'm good. All righty. Well then, feel free to take it away in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. That's a true fact. Justin Roberts Young. Hey friends, I'm I'm here for you. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey everybody, I'm over here. Hey, so uh there was a really big announcement. We didn't actually have time to cover it last week. And I want to get into it, just jump right into it. And what that was is the week before, we had the first uh real kind of media event by Elon Musk backed company Neuralink. Neuralink, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a company that's working on brain machine interfaces. Because part of the idea, if you know, ultimately, if you want to be able to fight the robot AI uprising, maybe we just join the ranks by connecting our brains to computers. And there's a lot more that than that to the company. But the idea is they're working on technologies that bridge that last gap. You know, if you think about, you know, we're, look at like the idea, the evolution of, of the of the first you had you watched people on a play, then you watch people on a movie screen. And then it got closer, you watch people on a TV screen. And then it got closer, you watch people on your computer sitting on your desk. And then it got closer because you stared at your phone. And then it's going to be contact lenses. And then, or gargles, then contact lenses. And the next step is just going to be just wire you right into the brain. Which So uh, is the primary purpose of Neuralink the consumption of media? Or is there a control of media? Is it a two-way street oh. or a one-way street? Oh, I mean, their their goal starting off is like helping amputees control electronic limbs and helping people who have you know, brain injuries and all sorts of motor functions. It's basically just allowing the brain to directly control things. It's it's you know they didn't talk they didn't talk anything about wiring a Netflix into your head. That was just you know me. Um, but, well, sure, uh, sure, but but yeah. in the presentation they talked about cochlear implants, which is a a mm-hmm. data in point so mm-hmm. it's like if they're if they're i i'm wondering if if they have a, a bigger focus on on more data out of the brain or data into the brain well i mean i think mean, it's kind of equal because doing both is what allows you to do stuff you do a thing then you get a response to it so part of what they talked about their innovation was is you know they they, they mentioned some benchmarks for you know brain you know brain interfaces which is a real thing like brian just pointed out cochlear implants you know what putting wires in the brain you know to clusters of uh, neurons to control things. What they're working on now is uh, they say they've increased like 100x, you know, the efficiency. They have much, much thinner wires. They've built this robot that can surgically insert these things, but they say they want to get to the procedure like LASIK because you have to put these tiny, tiny, tiny little wires into the brain. And you, the, the, the more close you can get to specific groups of neurons, the better. You know, a lot of what we have now just hits broad groups of neurons where you just sort of have to like, you know, trigger them in a very, very mass away and not finally attune them and send feedback back. So the, 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 the comp is LASIK in that, you know, the, the idea of, of screwing around with your eyes is something that is like, horrifying and obviously very high stakes, but yet LASIK has, you know, progressed to a period where it, it you know, for my wife, it was literally an in and out procedure in like 30 minutes uh, mm-hmm. and she was fully recovered by you know the 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 next day so they want to do that for brain surgery precisely precisely and you know for eventually down the road that any one of us who wants to have this sort of interface and they talk about for the medical uses right now you would have this interface you would control it they literally show an iphone app that you would control it from 
to say this is what the app controls, this is what it's able to do, which, you know, I don't want to yada yada, but like obviously it's security implications. There's all those other sort of stuff. And like there are, it's a concern, but it's worth watching the presentation. So what uh, what were the big highlights for you, for uh, for for you? Because uh, spoiler alert, I, I'm not going to spend two hours watching the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me was one to see how far along they were. Was to see, you know, what their goals were, and and focusing on, hey, and it's the obvious thing: we need to make these leads tinier. We need to be able to make these things tinier to connect to the brain. Two is for them to make an announcement. Yes, we have made we we are this far ahead of where everybody was. You know, yesterday people thought state of the art was this. Uh, now they're you know they're coming out saying no, we've done this. We've had this. We're way this is way further along than where people thought it was. Um, they made a big talk. You know, they talked a lot about we now we want to. They said we're telling everybody this because we want to work with institutions. We want to work with other people. We're at the phase now where we have to, you know, partner up with universities and researchers to move it forward. And so there's no point to us keeping secret what we're doing. When, so. uh, uh, oh, that's interesting. Cause they do, they have to move into the scientific, uh, open research, uh, mindset. Uh, when, when, when they got robots, uh, putting electrodes in the brain, are, are they punching through the skull or are they cutting the skull open? And, and, uh, am I misunderstding how the, the that the blood ba brain barrier is a thing? That, that that like like are you puncturing that when you do that how does how does all that work yes <laughs> uh so yeah you're you're basically the ideas are using tiny 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 little these minuscule threads and they talk about how like they're you know a tenth smaller or something like that 100 times smaller than a human hair and those are going through the skull into the brain and you have to go to different parts of the brain to do different things so the idea is they have this, they showed off the surgical robot they designed, which is to, to, to do the precision placement of these threads. Then the goal from that is they want to do their next generation or, you know, further out, they want to use just a laser system basically to do that. They want to have a laser that goes in there and connects these things. So they showed that you can see the machine and then it's also cool. They show a timeline there. I think Bryce had it up there for a moment, which shows you kind of like, you know, they want to start doing human trials next year. You know, they want to start moving into that. And... It kind of follows this sort of you put some connections into the brain, right? You figure out how to target things. So like they want us to do, you know, do to treat, you know, quadriplegia due to like they point out to spinal cord injuries at the C1 and C4 vertebrae, right? So they're saying, hey, we think we want to try to treat people with this. So we want to look for people who's are having these issues and see if we can't, you know, provide them, you know, finer control, whatever. So there's a lot of, you know, there's these medical goals they're trying to do. And the first thing is to helping people with paralysis. And they're looking to do next year to start those first studies, which is exciting. But, you know, the end of the day is, you know, the long run is you can see the roadmap is tinier threads, tinier threads, and better ways to do it. Because, like, yeah, Brian, having, you know, having a hole puncher go in the back of your head and put these things in there, no matter how tiny the hole puncher is still scary – they think they could get to the point where it could be a laser and you've never even noticed, which would be like, you know, and I mean, you notice, but you wouldn't like feel pain. So where in the, the, the catalog of Elon Musk backed projects, you obviously have ones that are functioning businesses like Tesla and SpaceX. Uh, you have ones that are still in a, a little bit of a provability phase, like boring company. And then you have stuff that he's just kind of put out there like Hyperloop. Where, you know, of those functioning Musk industry uh, uh, arms, like what is Neuralink the most like? You know, it, it, I would say part of what like works, you know, the, 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 all those analogies come down to where he says, hey, here's an engineering problem that we've not thrown enough time in uh, right questions at, you know, I mean, we've had rockets for, you know, Rocketry as it is, has you know been around for almost you know a century and haven't changed a whole lot. And then he says, okay, you know, some people suggested, what if you bring parts of the rocket back using you know this thing or whatever? Can we do this now with where the technology is? People have always wanted to do this. What's changed now? Let's go look in the last ten years, fifteen years. What's changed in manufacturing stuff to say the thing we thought we couldn't do, we could do. Electric cars. You know, you couldn't start a really good electric car company in the 1990s because batteries sucked all these things just didn't weren't there you know but you could start out like a car company in the 2000s because of cell phones and everything else have driven you know lithium phone you know lithium battery development down to the point that it made sense to build a car on top of 2000 batteries 
So he's really good at saying, here's a problem that what it really needs is, a, you know, I need to get a good a bunch of experts together and a bunch of money, which yeah. has been done before, but now's the right time where you have the biggest impact. You know, the other thing that Tesla's really good at is uh, having a top-down commitment to customer service on Twitter. Uh, so, you know, the, you, anybody, you could just be any random jamoke and start asking the CEO of the company when they're going to start including uh, uh, Audible in the, uh, the, 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 the playback. And, you know, Elon Musk will just come right back. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got the, the Bluetooth slap down from Elon Musk. <laughs> I asked him out, like, I saw that he was on Twitter and it was like 20 minutes ago prior. And I'm like, oh, I'll just ask him. Um, hey, any chance for, you know, audible support? And I threw in the obligatory, I like player of games too, you know, um, yeah. like one of Elon's favorite books. And he writes, can't just play, the, play through your phone or play though phone Bluetooth. And it's like, you know, as Chris Rock says, you know, I could dial the telephone with my toes, but you know, it's like, <laughs> doesn't make it a good idea. Yeah, I can. It's but then I have to flop my phone to control. What's that? Oh, it's just joking. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's to be done. Yeah. So that was funny. So like, yeah, he responded. I'm grateful for what they did. You know, and 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 audible support is not need to be a priority for them. It would make my life easier. And you know, my point is is that you you know, I, I like to listen to my media without having to touch my phone when I'm in a car. But you know, he responded and I was, you know, and then I made a joke afterwards, yeah. like, you know, Henry Ford never responded to me. Never. Eight years I drove a Ford, never a tweet, never anything. Yeah. Um, I tell you, it shows you a commitment. A commitment. Uh, but all right, so well, well, interesting thing that happens when you get an email response from Elon Musk, he replies to you, the pile on from everybody else. Oh, you get just all of a sudden rip your mentions of uh, oh, yeah. like, but, look at this guy getting smacked down. Look at this. And I'm like, it's like getting slapped by Frank Sinatra. Like, hey, everybody, I met Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you, you, your only response to all of this should have been person by person. And I'll give my rebuttal this Friday on <laughs> Discovery Channel when my Shark Week special, Andrew Maine Ghost Diver, airs. Yeah. I don't need a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd build audible support in the uh, suit that I made myself when on uh, that I'll demonstrate on Friday, I, August I 2nd. I challenge Elon yeah. Musk to a battle. 80 feet underwater in shark-infested waters with suits of her own design. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dude, that's great. No, so that's this Friday, huh? What's that? This Friday. Friday. This Friday. Andrew Main, Shark Week debut, everybody. Uh, uh, do yourself a favor and retweet. Andrew had a great tweet uh, on uh, uh, just reminding everybody to yell to the voice assistant of your choice be it amazon's apples or google's uh to be uh, to to remind you to turn on the television friday august 2nd 9 p.m shark week it's andrew main ghost diver yeah check it out uh so um speaking of elon musk uh last week just a few days ago they tested the Starhopper. Starhopper is the platform they're using to test the brand new. Wait, hold on. Can we can we go back to Neuralink just for just for two seconds? Oh, yeah, sure. uh, uh, so how involved is he? Like this is uh, on 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 a scale from Hyperloop to uh, Tesla. Uh, how how much uh, of of Elon's personal focus is is on Neuralink? You know, when he gave the presentation and he spoke with his other researchers, it felt like any other CEO who's heavily involved with the company in, in the stages of where it's at. You know, he, he Elon handled a you know number of questions, knew that, and deferred them to other people for more specifics on that. But, you know, you have some – and I would say that the difference between Elon and other tech CEOs who uh, have really cool, sexy startups that, you know, they fund – a lot of times they feel like a guy that's sort of like, oh, I like what you're doing. I'll throw some money by there and I'll stop by. And they have kind of just an investor's level understanding. Yeah. Elon has an engineer's level understanding. He's not, you know, he's not the most qualified, you know, propulsion scientist in the building at SpaceX. He's he's not going to be the guy who knows the best about, you know, uh, you know, machine interfaces at Neuralink. There are experts for that, but he's the guy that understands enough about what everybody's doing that he can get up there and, and have a conversation or talk about them and bring them together and understand probably what's important and stuff. So you get an idea that he's, you know, he's he's I think he's one of the smartest CEOs we've ever had as far as just a broad knowledge of stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, Starhopper. 
So Starhopper is the test platform they want to use because they've got these brand new Raptor engines, which are the methane engines they want to use to, to power Starship, which is Elon Musk and SpaceX's plan for basically a building a fully reusable rocket that can go to anywhere, you know, just about anywhere in the solar system. You know, the two stages, the big booster stage, the Starship goes on top of it, and it uses what we pointed out, the Raptor engines or these super powerful methane em engines. So the first step is to build these a test platform, which is this rap, you know, Raptor-based platform called the Starhopper. And they said, hey, we're going to try to do a test of this. And they did a test a few days ago. And this thing, when, it's hard to see because they did it at night. And all you see is this cloud of smoke. And you have to kind of zubruder it to figure out, oh, damn, this thing went up like 60 feet and moved to the right. Um, and that's what the thing did. Or minute went at 20 feet or something like that. And so the thing has lifted off without a tether. It's taken off. You can see it actually rising up there. You know, and it flew to the side, you know, you know, several, you know, a distance and then landed again. And they're going to try to go again in like a week or two for like a 200 feet. And Elon says, you know, in a few months time, we may see the Starship take off. Wow. And so these would be another hop test uh, just to make sure that everything on a, on a base level can go up and come back down. Yeah, just incrementally moving from one. This was just a test of the engine systems on the Starhopper, and then they're building the full stack of the Starship, which they're building a test to Starship, which will be something that's going to go up, you know, ideally extremely high. And then when they do the full version, which will go could go orbital. Um, so this is this is moving at a fast pace, you know, which is you know often a criticism of SpaceX that maybe they go too fast, but you know, I, I like that better than what we were doing before. Sure. Uh, yeah. And, you know, part of the thinking is that, you know, what they're trying to do is get this thing developed as quickly as possible because we have that we want to make it to, you know, the we want to go back to the moon. And if we can have SpaceX show that, like, listen, our tech is ready, fund us. So uh, yeah. I, I assume it was <clears throat> unfair attention grabbing headlines uh, because next to the success of the Starhopper jump were headlines saying, SpaceX set fire to a hundred acres of wild land. Uh, was was that just a case where it's like, yeah, that's why you go out and buy this land so that you can accidentally set fire to it? Yeah, it was a much smaller burn than the headline said. They took the total size of the preserve and said they set fire to this whole thing. And yeah, they the rocket took off and and you know something caught on fire and they let it burn out and they put it out. You know, it, it's you know the kind of sort of thing you grass for in texas we see those kind of controlled burns done all the time but um but you know it was i i haven't heard you know this, this, this stuff i've dug through it wasn't like a big deal you know yeah it was like, i think, yeah, I think that grass... if, if you're not from around here the idea of 100 acres of grass fire sounds like a thing and it's like yeah that's not a thing no. Yeah, they had. There were already when they because when they do this launch, there are fire trucks and stuff on the scene. It's all there, and so I don't think that uh, you know. And it's like because you see the headline, oh, they set fire to about a hundred acres. You'd read the actual amount that it was on fire, and it was way less and whatnot. But you know, yeah, say the God progress. Don't complain. Just let it happen. No, you got to be careful at all this, and maybe it's maybe a bigger deal than we realize. But you know, I just. Like we said, we're from Florida and Texas and stuff, and we see these sort of controlled burns done in areas all the time. So yeah, it's certainly not anything that uh, you know, should be the headline, right? It's a, yeah. uh, it's just another it's another element. Of it. it very much yeah. was the headline on very many outlets, which is such a bummer. Yeah, it's hard. Part of the problem is it's like remember when we covered when they did the grasshopper, right? And we showed this thing taking off and landing out there in the middle there, and and it was. People don't understand. People are like, is it camera tricks, whatever? And nobody understood the scale of how big that was, right? Because you see this thing in this remote field, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And it felt like as cool as just a big drone taking off or landing. And you're like, no, this is a nine story building that just took off and landed. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. But oh, they, they crashed one. I guess that's newsworthy. And, and you're trying to explain to people, like, no, this is what's what's really, really cool about this. And the star hopper thing, it's like, yeah, you just see a cloud of fire and a smoke, and it's hard to go like, no, this is like the first full flow combustion engine, you know, you know, rocket engine like this. It's this, this. It's like blah, 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 blah. Oh, a fire set something on fire. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. News flash. Literal news flash. Rockets cause fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you another news flash, and that is that you can support this show at patreon.com slash weird things. If you head on over to patreon.com slash weird things, you can give us a little bit of cash. And you want to know what you get for your money? Well, the satisfaction of keeping one of the best shows on the Internet uh, live, loud, and independent each and every week. But also, you get easier access to our After Things show where we talk about creativity, business, and the... Uh, the pursuit of making one the other. And also like we do sometimes on uh, the after thing show, we talk about the art that inspires us, including once upon a time in Hollywood, which we all saw, we have some divergent opinions. You should go ahead and check it out by supporting us at patreoncom slash weird things. Uh, Justin. Yeah. Dude. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what to say. Oh, uh, what do you need suggestions? We can we can go to the audience. I heard dentist. Oh no, you can send your suggestions through your lawyer. Oh uh, wait, when? Wait a minute. Why do we need lawyers? I mean, like I had mine ready, but uh, I want to know what you guys needed lawyers for. Well, I mean, listen. As your friend visiting you here in the county lockup, telling you that you two are going to jail, yeah. it's kind of scary. Kind of scary. I uh, I don't know. I mean, you know. Um, they say Welcome we're gonna to prison quest, everybody. We're Justin and Brian go to jail. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, we didn't do it. Everybody knows we didn't do it, and and if we did, did it, we had the best of intentions. Besides, so you have the best of Brian, intentions. I'm writing Brian, it down. Brian and I are well suited for this. Don't panic, Bry. Remember, we have portrayed professionally crackhead number one and crackhead number two. Yes. Uh, uh, you drawing on our rich acting experience for the as yet unreleased uh, uh, Tijuana Jackson movie. Uh, we are we are ready to roll. Don't worry. We Sorry, it's really it. hard to hear you over the sound of the scraping of this prison shank I'm working on. It, you know, it was originally a, a, a pins in my shins. Good, and I'm and I'm just working on my mean mug. Ugh. Nobody come around here. My buddy's got a shank, and I got bared teeth. You're in a conference room in county lockup. Be careful, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, so let me read the charges. Apparently, both of you, uh, you're in Austin. You're recording a podcast episode, and you're rousted from the studio by FBI authorities because uh, allegations that you guys have been running a criminal enterprise. Okay, look, I, I tried to explain this. Scam Nation is just a name. We teach magic. And yes, some of the techniques of deception can be used by con artists, but we're very explicit that we don't we don't want anybody to go out and scam. Exactly. Well, and and uh, I'll let me add to that that the bookmaking operation I was running uh, outside of the back of Scam Nation is totally legit in the eyes of the one true sheriff the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I wish these crybabies would stop complaining about their losses. Well, let me let me go through this. You guys are being Rico acted because of uh, Diamond Club. Diamond Club, which we hear is like kind of a, a paler, whiter version of MS-13. Um, <laughs> we understand that you guys have been running a ga gambling. I bring up this game. Something about a. Some sort of movie league where you have a betting enterprise based upon feature films and stuff. I mean, look, okay, look, uh, uh, betting would imply that there was anything left to chance. I'll have you look at our track record. There was never yeah. a chance Team Night Attack was going to win. Come on, man. Yeah, and Nip again, look, uh, 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 did other people throw in whatever they were going to throw in? I don't know. What are you, my mom? I'm not telling you anything. Some sort of extortion racket involving something called Patruin, Patron, Patreon, Patreon, or something <laughs> like this. I mean, look, it's called it's called joy gifting. Uh, it's it's yeah. not it's not uh, an underground payment system. It's just look, uh, uh, you you got extra money laying around. Don't let it clutter up your pockets. Get your money out of the way. Spring cleaning is upon us at the end yeah, of the summer. And by well, the way. Are we running a protection racket? If you mean protection from boredom by having high quality content in your life, so you always have a smile on your face and a song in your heart, then yes, proudly we protect our community against that. Uh, one, uh, one, one second. Uh, hey, man, if if you could give me one of your teeth, we could file that down too. I could put it on the tip of this thing. 
And then that way we'd have a you, we, we'd both have a shank. Uh, right. uh, uh, can you give me one uh, of your teeth? I, I pull out a a very small burlap sack that uh, contains my baby teeth that I've inexplicably kept with me. <laughs> okay, until, that's good. Uh, that's good. Now. I I, uh, I I examine them thoroughly and decide that they're probably much more valuable as dice and begin to make them into cubes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, lawyer man. Uh, hey, lawyer, I'm just your friend just telling you what the charges are. And also, remember, like, that law that we passed we didn't realize that we, we, we brought in the worst of, like, other countries sort of, like, libel standards and stuff where, like, insult is now – and not just a civil offense, it's actually a criminal offense. <laughs> oh, you're saying, offense. you're saying we finally have evolved to the sensibilities of England where I we have to prove that we didn't libel somebody? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, you know, uh, to take any offense or whatever could be construed as. No, well, I mean, no. look, at that. honestly, what the big deal on that is name one thing we've ever said that's made anybody upset ever. You can't. Yeah, Everybody exactly. loves us. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think that a lot of these impressions are great. They're not denigrating the responsibility or reputation of well-known media figures. After all. I asked my friend Brian whether or not this was a flattering impression. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And and for the record, I, I I don't know what I said that gave the impression that I, I didn't like Captain Marvel. If that's what this is about, uh, uh, yeah, I could be talked into its merits. Well, we have an amic amicus curiae from Brie Larson, R.L. Stein. Uh, <laughs> the list goes on of all the people who joined in on this. But listen, I'm just your friend telling you these things, okay? Uh, I'm okay. telling you the fact that I will be the judge – Irrelevant, irrelevant. I am, I am impartial, <laughs> totally impartial, to this. All, all right, listen. Uh, I, I would like to, I would like to declare that my counsel is going to be uh, Justin Robert Young. Uh, he, uh, no, no, uh, no. And no. and I'll be his counsel. It's the easiest way. It's the easiest way. Uh, uh, but, uh, as oh, as your okay. lawyer, I I recommend that you do what you've always done in the face of uh, government intervention. Let's sit Indian style on the floor until this all blows over. <laughs> Fortunately I, I do. for you, we, we got the best lawyer. You're, you do have some fans out there. They've hired a lawyer for you. Is, all right. Hey, Brian, look, we barely just sat down Indian style, and it's already working. So <laughs> who's our who's our lawyer? I mean, uh, I, you're, good, good news, we got him cheap because we got an internet lawyer certificate. Barrister. Bryce Castillo Esquire. Oh, man, oh, hold on. I was going to... For, for the record, uh, uh, look, hi, Bryce. It's wonderful hi. to see you again. I'm, it's I, not that uh, I don't Would you like some you. coffee? It's, uh, look, I, I have a standing arrangement Cappuccino? with the firm of Sockman Goldfarb and Goldfarb. Oh. I, I would really prefer to go with our traditional lawyer, but I, I mean, I guess... I, I don't think he's practicing anymore, Brian. Uh, uh, I don't know that that person exists. He, he moved into lucrative real estate. Yeah, it turns out uh, he wasn't there, so you didn't really have to pretend. Ah, well, uh, I thought we I were mean, all just pretending. It, I mean, don't – I mean, you understand that, that – I mean, the reason Bryce is – no offense, Bryce. just hasn't been a kind of a lot of liars because, you know, well, the other thing. The other thing. I mean, the, the big charge. Uh, I, I, yeah. I mean, come on, guys. You, let's be real here. You know I, your charge. I mean, you know what you I, I, You know, I listen. We know listen what you, did. I, you don't have to I, tell me, you know what you did. I mean – I, there are a lot of people at Dragon Con, and I don't know why you guys got the blame as your friends, but the blame kind of fell right on you guys. Oh, and wait. Okay. Wait so... a minute. Are, are you saying that, that universally every major IP creator laid the copyright infringement super bomb at our feet for all of Dragon Con? Well, after the ones that were still alive, yes. Oh, oh dear. the other bomb. There might be another. It sounds like there might have been another bomb. Or the ones that weren't roaming through the streets. Okay. Yeah, All right. yeah, you yeah. want to know what? Uh, uh, I'm I'm not too ashamed to admit it. I don't know what you're talking about, nor do I remember it, and I'm sure I'm innocent. So why don't you just go ahead and lay this fabricated fantasy at our feet so we can dismiss it with a haughty laugh. I mean, laughter would be nice because we haven't heard much of it since what happened, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And and frankly, because there are no more children's cries and laughter to hear. 
everybody's a critic. I get it. You guys saw the latest night attack. Look, they all can't be winners. We do our best. Listen, well, judge, if you if, if, judge, we there's something in the Constitution that says we gotta know what you're charging us. With. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, isn't that literally the Magna Carta? Lawyer, listen to my lawyer. Or he a habeas corpus. A backwards, yeah. and forwards, a backwards and forwards understanding of something in the Constitution. <laughs> I believe that there's a thing that says. There's a thing there's that a says. Thing. There's a thing. Look it up. Google the thing in the Constitution. It's Objection, right there. Justin. Objection. Oh. I don't think you're saying it loud enough because apparently old plug ears McJudge face doesn't hasn't heard of a little thing called the Internet. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, what about that? Oh, uh, overruled for you. You're overruled <laughs> on this one. Go to the Internet. This is this is what I'm saying. Mm. Is if somebody can tell us who fed the infected sandwich to the stray dog, which then infected the other stray dogs and all the household pets, which then turned on people, mm -hmm. we could okay. maybe make a deal for one of you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, oh, for one of us. Oh. Oh, what a dilemma. Number one, uh, uh, we're not breaking up. This is one for all, all for one. We are going to exonerate ourselves, and nobody's making a plea deal. All right? Nobody is going to talk first and elongate this for a long enough time so I can silently make a little <laughs> wink to our attorney that nobody would be making a plea deal immediately. All right? So that's first. Uh, well, first what's day. up with your eyes? Uh, you, you, I, got you, you, I got these new con. I got these new contacts. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, okay. Well, well, I mean, nobody's <laughs> doing it, right? Nobody. Not nobody. Certainly not Brian. Not anybody in general, but definitely not Brian. Okay, look, I, I, maybe there was a dog, and maybe I ate an infected sandwich. Did you ever think about uh, maybe maybe it was delicious? I don't, I don't hear you talking about the quality of the sandwich. That's the thing, Judge. The Constitution says sandwich taste matters. Yeah, exactly. Was it a $5 foot long? Now, oh, or oh, you your honor, your honor. I, I, I submit into that? evidence. I, 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 uh, I'm I, not I, your I, judge, Brian. I'm just your friend okay. telling you what's going on before you go before the judge. <clears throat> Which uh, is also you, my, right? Uh, uh, your friendship. I'm if I might accuse myself. It's possible. <laughs> uh, your friendship. If I might <laughs> submit into evidence, uh, 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 exhibit A, the, the sandwich in question, half <gasps> eaten by a dog. Uh, will you examine... A, 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 uh, Justin, uh, does this look like what? What flavor of sandwich does this look like to you? Overruled. Stop the stammering. Get to the point. <laughs> uh, okay. Will you will you describe the condiments on this sandwich? Uh, wait, you're asking me or him? Well, I mean, wait, wait, your honor. To my untrained eyes, I see a little bit of ketchup right. on there. Right. I'm just your friendship. Your friendship. Your friendship. Uh, look, uh, look, sorry, your friendship. friendship. Your friendship, please. Uh, uh, you'll see perhaps a bit of mustard in there. Uh, 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 yeah, your friendshipfulness. Uh, tell me, do you see uh, do you see a little bit of white white stuff on there? What's that? What does that look like? Mm. What does it look like? Well, uh, Listen, for guys, I'd help you out, but I turned state's witness. I, I, <laughs> what? I can't, like, like, Wait, what are you testifying for? I, you're, you're supposed to be our friendship. There is mayo on this sandwich, and there's no way, even if we're trying to take out the world, that either and I, uh, either Justin or I, would be caught dead putting Satan's, uh, Satan's tasty baby gel on any sandwich. It would never happen. That's right. We all hate so what mayonnaise. You're saying is, and I'm just hypothetically here, hypothetically here, but in this topsy turvy world, where dogs and cats are eating people, and sometimes yeah. people eating people. Rules can change. So you're telling me you find Manny is extremely unappetizing, right? Uh, uh, no, more than that, your friendshipfulness. Uh, uh, we find it an abomination, and not even if our goal was to destroy the world, would we engage in that unholy alliance of whipping of eggs? Please so, respect our religious rights. Answer me. So if you were to bite into a sandwich that maybe you had, you had ordered one of your cult members to prepare for you, like make me a sandwich and use those special ingredients that we were preparing. Yes. And you bit into it and you tasted mayonnaise. What would you do? I, I uh, first of all, uh, would excommunicate them. Uh, uh, second of all, would take 12 showers 
And then wow. uh, I would have some choice Twitter posts on the topic, Your Honor. Well, would, you, list- would you not feed that sandwich to a stray dog if there was one nearby? Would oh, you be good. like, oh, this is gross, you eat this? Uh, no, I would, I, would, I would burn it. I would set fire to it. It's the only way. I, I, you can't. Judge, judges, dog. the sandwich Imagine burned. Give us a ticket. Give us a ticket for burning a sandwich in the street <laughs> if that's illegal. But yeah. we so would let you would let a defenseless animal starve. Oh uh, yes, because look, here's the thing, uh, your French will this. Uh, if a dog uh, eats it, laws are then, stricter. Then or animal law even stricter now. The, <laughs> then the mayo is in the dog, and then what happens when the dog gets hit by a car? It gets eaten by the buzzard, and then the mayo's in the buzzards, and then what happens? Wait a minute. The circle of life. <laughs> is this how everybody died? <laughs> uh, for those of you just tuning in right now, uh, the cult group leaders, and you have to tell us who is the actual leader of this cult. We're curious to know. Um, are being accused of starting, well, a lot of things. Um, they're under a lot of allegations, investigations, primarily because they're accused of concocting and unleashing a super plague at Dragon Con, which is now spread, infecting every household animal. Um, and it's been pretty devastating as animals have been eating each other and eating people. And now reports of people eating people. But it's more interesting to the animals because we've seen that other story play out. I'll tell you what, man. If you want to find who did it, you find somebody who loves mayonnaise, somebody who, mm-hmm. for all we know, believes that if they if the mayonnaise is in everybody's body, then everybody will be so tasty, nobody can resist eating each other. And uh, uh, although that would actually, I think I'm right. indicting us because that would make us yeah, immune. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would then, like that stricken from the record uh, yeah. because of Strike the law. All right, all right. Here's, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go out and go talk to the authorities to see if I can't get a better deal for me (laughs) you confer with your attorney bryce and you figure Mm -hmm. out your strategy this is what's going to happen is you're going to have to go for a judge you could ask for bail you could say like no and say the evidence isn't there and he can decide if not they're probably going to send you to that new space prison which we'll get into next episode okay well then we kind of know where this is going to end but uh (laughs) (laughs) guys listen up i'm your attorney here and i got i got something to say i gave you a falsely accused i'm sorry go ahead did you guys do it? You don't gotta say. No one is just us. Did you do it? I, did you do it? I, I, did I, you do it? Look, I got stand. I've got kids. Okay. If you didn't which, say what of the of the two of us, which one of us mm-hmm. would want everybody except them to eat mayo? Let me remind you, I have two kids with uh, bad food allergies. So, so you tell me. <laughs> why would I? I mean, I'm not saying. First of but all, neither Justin of us did. knows your children. And Bruce Justin knows that you uh, have. Uh, oh. And also, uh, look, if we're really going to start parsing here, and again, team unity, team look, unity, no of us one did it. turning against right, right, each other, right. right. But who here regularly feeds dogs? Ooh, Justin doesn't have a dog. Okay. Where are you unit, though? Where are you unit? Where are you unit? There's no I cracks. Mean, this damn, no cracks at all. I mean, I mean. Uh, if you want to know who feeds the dogs, we could get Bonnie in here, and she'll make it very clear in no uncertain terms. Wait a minute. Are Why? you indicting we your children and or wife? We found our defense. It couldn't have been me. I don't feed dogs. It couldn't have been you. You don't feed dogs. There's only one person in our orbit who regularly feeds dogs. And husband and wife can't testify against each other. We got this. Technicality. Mistrial. Uh, That's your right. in this. I move for a mistrial. All right. Also, I would like to take an unrelated uh, space trip. So if you have anything on the menu, happy to go to space. That sounds fun. Uh so you're you're back. I'm so I'm just your friend here. I'm just it's Andrew. You've always been our judge. friend, Andrew. Somebody yes, will be yes, always my trust. wig, oh, no. in my robes. There we go. There's his robes. Uh, 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 Andrew, how, how do you feel about mayonnaise? Because the three of us, we're all against it. Oh, I love mayonnaise. Gross. Huh. Oh, go on. No, no, no. Explain. Oh, really? Who hates mayonnaise? To would, be honest with. You. Would Would like, it be fair to say that you wish that there were more things that tasted? Like mayonnaise? Oh. I'm saying as a judge <laughs> who judges people, people who don't like mayonnaise, I feel a little more judgy towards them. <laughs> now, Andrew, weren't, were you, weren't, you, weren't, weren't you at Dragon Con? <laughs> Sorry, it's a new character. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's our, he's our attorney. He's representing <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
Answer the question. This whole gonna... system's on trial now. <laughs> You're not fooling me. I know who you are, Bryce. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Justin, it seems a little weird to me. Of all the times I've been at Dragon Con, I almost uh, never uh, see Andrew. Then one day, a mayonnaise-filled sandwich gets eaten by a dog hey, at Dragon hey, Con. Hey, yeah, exactly. I'm, so Andrew, on. I'm the judge here. <laughs> yeah. A Andrew, likely story. <laughs> More like Andrew Mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, bird! <laughs> all right, fine. Fine, That's, I'm not going to be your judge anymore. <laughs> Hold uh, on, is that, is that the punishment? Hey, we did it! <laughs> <laughs> Miss oh, trial. Bryce, you think this is easy? You think this is easy, Bryce? Uh, yeah, you, you know what? I think you're it is easy. Wait, now <laughs> you're the judge. <laughs> so, oh, no, <laughs> lawyer <laughs> Bryce is now Judge Bryce. Hey, Judge Bryce. Hey, wait, okay. Uh, these, these chart, what's what's crap, man? Judge Bryce. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Andrew fed the mayonnaise sandwich to the dog wow. and destroyed the world. That's, That's right. Wow. In the library I with the mustard. I'm back now. <laughs> oh, no. Here you go. Oh, sorry. I have to... All right. Thank you very much. You didn't have to give it back, but now I'm the judge again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dog. God, no! I'll never do backsies. You had hey, me. God, you're the worst lawyer turned judge turned lawyer again ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm holding the wig up. Hey guys, it's your friend here. I can help you out if oh, you good. plead yes. innocent. If you plead innocent, they'll make you a deal. If you go for guilty, whew, you plead innocent. <laughs> well, I, I'll take it. <laughs> we plead yeah, it's, 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 innocent. You, no, we're innocent. not gonna go for guilty. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> No, I mean, if you say you're guilty, they'll go easier on you. If you say you're innocent, I get confused if I have the wig on. Wrong. I'm sorry. Point now, is. Now, as point the, is, what, what, what kind of deal? This judge, he's a space judge, and he's a space hanging judge. <laughs> so he likes to hang out in space. Yeah, yeah, which, hung and and hung in space. It probably takes a long time because of the lack of gravity and all. So I mean, look, all right, all right hold on real quick. A, a sidebar, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, look. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm taking the wig off. Uh, technically, Bryce, it's not a lack, complete lack of gravity. It's called microgravity. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, wig's okay. back on. <laughs> good, good. Uh, look, 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 it, uh, comments in my court, and I will throw you out, no matter how <laughs> uh, stupid and on the point they are. Look, if we, we could get sent to space, which mm -hmm. would be fun, but what if they sent us fun. to the Mayo Mines? Of the Sea of Tranquility. Okay. All, right. All right. Number one, I think good first effort, guys. Number one, everybody pat yourself on the back. That was, that was Hey, the mail mines. That sounds like a really gross reference to something I don't understand. Okay. Back on the <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so I think we got away from our central theory, which is mm -hmm. we just pin this all on Bonnie. <laughs> That's and, and that's the strategy. Rat. And here's the thing, Brian. It's going to work, so you don't ever see, have to see or answer for your choices here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, I know, Brian, I know what you're saying. Oh, my God. How am I going to face this? Uh, how am I ever going to face my wife again? First things first, you'll never see her. Salt. <laughs> Number two, how am I going to explain this to my kids? <laughs> Easy. All the media is going to call her a murderer and a patient zero. Just say, look, everything that the media says is true, kids. Who wants ice cream? The, uh, done and done. It, ice cream. Oh, guys, I'm taking the wig off. I'm going to give you some advice here, oh. okay? Uh, here's a couple of things that might help influence your decision. Number one, they have art classes in the space prison. There are art classes there, okay? Which, which you know, Bonnie likes art, right? Okay, yeah. I'm telling you. Also, we have this new thing. There's been, I don't know, there's a little bit of an uproar over like the whole parent child separation thing and regarding incarceration. We don't do that anymore. We put the children in jail with the parent. I, I, Look at I, that. I, 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 easy peasy, lemon okay. squeezy. Oh my God, wait a minute. Brian, no wife, no kids. Boys night out. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? I, 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 this is a fairly agonizing decision that I'm faced with with before my family. And to be honest, I'm a bit surprised that that of all people, you guys would put this to me. Uh, I, 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 I'm gonna say no. I would rather take both of us to jail than than wow. send my wife and kids. You know what? Wow. All three of us. I, I, hey, I, I'm I, the I, lawyer. I didn't yeah, do it. Yeah. yeah, a little thing called gross incompetence. You, uh, oh, Your Honor. Brian, you're gross. <laughs> your Brian, Honor. <laughs> Brian, you've inspired me. I, I, you want? I, I had a moment of weakness, and now I don't. I'm gonna march right into that courtroom. And I'm going to give this judge a piece of my mind. And I stride over there and I kick open the doors. I say, hey, judge. 
Are we in a hypothetical you're going to do this? Am I going to be the judge in your hypothetical? Hey, I'm judge. not good at these situations. Judge, are you there? Can you see Hypothetically, me? yes. Brian did it. No. <clears throat> oh! Right. Yeah. No, hey, it's it's not, man. Look, we were all going to hang out, and it was going to be boys' night, but <laughs> look at you. You're super husband. So, yeah, Brian did it. Body helped. Uh, they all <laughs> need to go to prison immediately. I, uh, you know what? You yeah, I get it. Yeah, your Honor. I, your Honor. I want to do it. I watched him do it. He fed that dog, man. He said, I love mayonnaise. This has all been an act. Uh, uh Finally, my greatest magic trick of all time reaches its uh, conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, he fed him. He knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, 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 full. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I, in fact, I, I got this. I got this tape. Uh, oh, it's me, Brian. <laughs> Remember that time that I fed the dog? Brian. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, go to uh, uh, YouTube.com slash The Modern Road. <laughs> uh, yeah, what? Your Honor, clearly now, that's a fake tape that's because that's the wrong movie. URL. That's not the right URL. <laughs> On fire wallets at <laughs> Yeah, uh, your your honor. Uh, you know, sure. If I did it, I did it because <laughs> I was told by Justin that that if I didn't feed this mayonnaise sandwich to the dogs, he was gonna feed mayonnaise to the whole family, including me. Also, he made Bryce deliver the message. So, uh, implication, uh, post facto, ad uh, absurdum. Now, hold on. The law. And so think about that. <laughs> Yeah, so, I can't, talk. you know, can't argue with an argument like that. I got to go check my legal law books in the back room. Me too. Um, and I got to decide, are you going to space jail or normal jail? And again, oh. I'm I, 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 yeah, your honor, your honor, I, I have fashioned if you need to, you know, make a call. I have fashioned these dice out of baby teeth. If they would be helpful to you. The way it's off, Brian, it's your friend. Guys, I'm just trying to help out. Okay. Man, it, looks bad. it looks bad, guys. It looks bad. It looks really, really bad. Weeks back on. I'm the judge now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I walk over to Brian and give him a little elbow like, man, this judge is a real piece of work, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, I say, uh, uh -huh. I, I say, sir, uh, 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 I, 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 I need protection from this man who wants to give me mayonnaise. Oh, man, wait. Wait, hold on, Brian. Are you still pissed off about the... When I implicated you in this crime, look. All I'm saying is, is like, if if if, if, if we're going, down, if I'm going down, we're both going down, and I'm going to okay. do my best to drag wow. Bryce along. Now, look, hold on, we had look, we had a look, plan. Look, 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 look. Yeah, I threw you under the bus, man. <laughs> but guess what? It was just a prank, bro. <laughs> Come on, hey, man. Heard about cool. it. Sorry, guys. Cool. I need a I need a bathroom break here. Um, I'm going to go in the back. The judges' chambers is really awesome. Hmm. Don't go anywhere. Keep your eyes on my car keys right here under the gavel. Look. I'm going to be back. I'm going to go to the back room. I'll be right back. All right. You, you okay. got it, Your Honor. All, All right. right. Listen All right. up. Hey. Listen I mean, up. no, it's just us here because there's, like, no bailiff. Got eaten. Yeah. There's the jury that's actually just a bunch of mops that I put googly eyes on. Mm -hmm. But uh, on your own honor. On right. your own honor, guys. Right. Okay. Go, 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 go. Enjoy the lounge. All right. Well, I'm putting the mop on top of a broom. All right. I'm putting like the, my wig on top of a broom. Yeah. Okay, so now it's double cleaning. All right, mop. get get so, this, guys, right. guys, right. guys. We right. have a decision right. to make. Okay, we, we have a decision to make. I want you to visualize. I have to the door, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of shy. I, I'm pee shy. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. that's fine. fine. Close the door. We we, we got to picture two different futures here. All right, I want you to take a moment. Yeah, just get confusing. It might take me a while. Don't get alarmed if you hear me trying to unlatch it and I shake the door because it's like because it's sticky. Yeah. I just I just want you to take a moment, take a deep breath, close your eyes for just a second. And then I run out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I grab the keys and I'm just hauling ass, running towards that sweet, sweet Andrew Main mobile. So you're just gonna leave us there? Uh, yes. What? Uncool. <laughs> okay. Uh, number one, I uh, 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 run after Brian. Yeah. Oh, but then you come to a law library with a window, just like Ted Bundy. Ooh, ooh, I paused to read the law books. Maybe there's something in there that will get us The off. thing about the law is it can help us I, out. I, 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 kick, I, I kick Brian in the shin as hard as I can, and he comically makes a high-pitched noise as the keys go up in the, up in the air, and I grab them. <laughs> I say, uh, that was fun. I guess we're going to space jail. <laughs> uh, no, no, wait, wait. We have a law library window. Let's crawl, let's crawl out of the window. Yeah, All right, Brian, look. Uh, uh, we each we each screwed each other. Uh, I think we can agree. Status quo. 
quid pro quo. Status quo. I mean, look, you pulled a funny prank. I pulled a funny prank. We're just a couple of pranksters. Okay. Listen, uh, let's get out of here. Uh, Bryce, as our attorney, you have to do what we say. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take these judges' robes and mm -hmm. these, these wigs. I want you to take okay. these law books. I want you to make two things that look like Brian and Justin. And your job is just keep them busy. Can I go get with us, you? Get us. Uh, well, I, mean, I, okay. <laughs> I mean, we'll see you on the other side. I'm sure we'll see you. Sure. Out, out, out no, you somewhere. know what? This is good. This is I. I didn't. I told them not to run. Uh, also, maybe if you feel like, if you don't mind admitting to the crime, that'd be real helpful for us. But yeah, uh, I'll do that one. Hey, I'll also do that. One. It's just a prank defense. <laughs> oh well. Uh, listen, I'll try that. You guys, you just go. You just go have a good time out on the on the hey, street. Hey, this is uh, Andrew over the intercom. Don't worry, I have the judge wig on. I left them in the other room. There is such a thing that it is just a prank defense. But the problem is, is the uh, the court can then say your sentence is just a prank too <laughs> but that's uh, good because we'll uh, just be cool about it and it'll be over yeah what if the prank is we have well, to eat that it, does, it, just, it doesn't yeah. just make you laugh it makes you think yeah. uh all right let's get out of this window we'll see you on the flip side bryce all right. hey guys if you're about to dive out the window just be careful take a good look at all the feral flesh-eating ass Oh, so we forgot oh. that the courthouse was a safe house. Okay, that's right. right. The mayo. It's Everybody ate the mayo. Apocalypse. Yeah. I mean, this, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. But do we have, because if it's Andrew's car, it's a Tesla, That can we have it come over here and run over the cats oh, and then we can like jump Batman into button. it? Yeah. The, no? uh, I, I, yeah. You could do that. Also, uh, the robes that you put on Bryce, there's a lot of catnip in the pocket. Just saying. Oh no, I'm sticking around. They yeah, yeah Bryce I'm, is Bryce is gonna just buy us a little I, bit of time. I don't know what I don't know. I told him not well, to go. I told him not to go, Judge. The cat in the pocket. Yeah. Okay. So hold on. I go back and say, Hey, Bryce, what you got in them pockets? Oh. Um, oh, by the way, in this world, uh, if the you know if the suspects flee, the attorney has to pay the price. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, come on. This is my first day in law school. <laughs> yeah, uh, man. I don't know that, these I, are law books. That's right. That's the law. Um, you know what? I just I, there's there looks like there's some weed in here. Why don't I just go with you guys? <laughs> uh, wait, that's no weed. That's catnip. What if oh. we what if we throw this off to the side? Yeah. Uh, uh, get, no, 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 Bryce. You already have the robes on. You go with the robes full of catnip. Go oh. distract the cat. Okay. <laughs> I All thought right. you were gonna say like we'll maybe I call. can pass the judgment and maybe. Hey maybe guys, I no, quit. No, no, no. You guys. So here's the deal. All right, so the car is to the right. <laughs> what I want you to do is run as fast as you can to the left. All right. All right. So you distract all the cats, uh -huh. and then we'll swing back and pick you up. All right. Here you go. Ready? All right. Go yeah. go go. <laughs> And next time on Prison Quest, we'll find out what happens. <laughs> and the fact that it's called Prison Quest does not augur well for us. No, it's not called successful life. You, you guys have stayed a step ahead so far. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe it's the quest to avoid prison. The Prison Quest, the quest for deferred punishment. Yes. Let's see. I'm saying, uh, you know, you're making choices. Uh, hey, do we have any, we have any picks? Oh, I got a pick. I got a pick. Um, man, oh man, did I really enjoy The Boys. I liked it a lot, and I think you should watch it. And, uh, <clears throat> I liked it partly because it starts For off... For those who don't know, The Boys is a TV series oh, thank on goodness. Amazon, and Brian is not making a lifestyle statement. Yeah, and then this is not, this is not a, uh, a, a, a new prison quest <laughs> episode. Um... Oh. The uh, uh, no, it's great. the The Amazon original, The Boys, is uh, I I I dug it. I watched the whole thing in a day. It's about superheroes, and I don't know if you want to tell people what it's about. Yeah, I mean, it's a uh, the opening scene is uh, it's a world where you got the it's about the Avengers, uh, but not really the Avengers. Uh, or the and, Justice League. I mean, you got more of a Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Superman archetype. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want – oh, yeah, you, you could tell uh, kind of what they're going for, uh, everything from, you know, your your, uh, your your snake eyes to your Superman to your, to your uh, Aquaman and so on. Uh, but uh, what I really dug is how much that the whole thing is like a veiled – uh, explanation of what Hollywood is like. Uh, it's it's uh, it, if the Avengers were real and were working for Disney, 
uh, and who ultimately serves the shareholders and incidentally serves up uh, justice. And as a result, there's a lot of darkness in all of this. And the darkness makes the light parts uh, have a lot more punch to it. I, I thought it was excellent. I liked it a lot. Yeah. And we're going to talk about it more on Court Killers on Spoiler Time tonight. So yeah. CourtKillers.com. <clears throat> Well, I said I've watched the first two episodes, really enjoyed them, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. So I, 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 I piggyback on your pick. Mm -hmm. I like the boys too. <laughs> uh, so you want to know what's interesting? Is I was trying to find in the comic whether or not there is a reference to the Diamond Club, because apparently there is a Diamond Club reference in, or the the the, the Diamond Club is a functioning thing in this show. So I'm curious if anyone's read the boys comic book. I've mm -hmm. I, I've heard it. The show is pretty divergent from the comics, is my is understanding. It? Like the the this mm -hmm. season, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know anything about the comics. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, yeah. or I don't maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. Oh no, no, no I'm just saying, just, uh, just if, interesting, name. interesting name. If, for, I, uh, if, if if I was going to give uh, a case for it being a uh, insider's reference, uh, uh, number one, the first episode of the series was directed by a uh, literal friend of the show, Dan Trachtenberg. Uh, although, I, I, second of all, the plot point, there's no neat reason to call it the Diamond Club. They could have just said an exclusive meet and greet or whatever, because it's not even a club thing. But then again, <clears throat> and also, also, it does happen within... 30 seconds of a fairly passable representation of a character that <laughs> Justin has done many times on Night Attack. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable, but also very likely a coincidence. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, if, 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 if the character was named Pastor James Thurgood, he could, <laughs> could, could have dropped a few Vs. Mm -mm. If he had said drop drop some V's on you, then, then that, that, would, that would have been all over. He dropped some V's on you, which is like the catchphrase of this one note character that I do on Night Attack periodically. Uh, then that would have been a wrap. All right. Uh, my pick is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I really, really liked it. We're going to talk about it on After Things. Uh, but I was, uh, I was, I was charmed. I think it is very self indulgent movie for Tarantino, but then again, he's been an indulgent director. Uh, for his entire career, so that shouldn't surprise you. Uh, it is long, at two hours and 45 minutes. But, man, did I just enjoy that world. And uh, uh, if he's if it's, if it's for real that he's only going to make 10 movies, then I would very much like him to go into 10-hour miniseries because uh, I think I could have spent a ton of time with those characters in that world. Mm -mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it more in after things. So I didn't. I I saw some scuttlebutt that he was doing. Is he doing the next Star Trek movie? Tarantino. This is the, this is the best part about Tarantino release week is that Tarantino will talk about anything in terms of the things that he wants to do or is going to do, and that's why you always it's like like clockwork. You'll always hear about the Pulp Fiction sequel. You'll always hear about the movie he wanted to do with the Vega brothers between. Reservoir Dogs and uh, Pulp Fiction. You'll hear about the Kill Bill sequel. Mm -hmm. So this is something that he's apparently worked on, an R-rated Star Trek. Uh, we got a little bit more of a hint that uh, it was apparently because he was not a fan of what J.J. Abrams' uh, uh, Kelvin timeline did. But uh, who knows whether or not we will see uh, we will see whether or not it happens. I don't know. I'm, I would I would bet against it. Weird. Yeah, it's one of those reoccurring talking, and that, and I want to see Tarantino create his own science fiction universe. I'd rather see that than see him do a Star Trek. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really, I don't know. Uh, 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 he's been fairly insistent that he only wants to do ten movies. Uh, he's up to nine. So, well, you said the Star Trek wouldn't count. It would, it would, you know, wow. for some reason, their Tarantino logic. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And and I don't know exactly whether or not he'll be able to just say, oh, I don't make movies. A now. very weird, arbitrary goalpost. But yeah, his, yeah. His, his thing is that he wants to have a coherent filmography like that. Yeah. Like he wants people to just be able to say, OK, I just watched all of his movies. I know what it, I know what he was about. I, I can sense common themes uh, and he doesn't want to do a billion. But whatever. He's weird. And he's Quentin Tarantino. And now, oddly enough, he's like more powerful than he's ever been in his career. So hmm. 
Uh, I've also got a movie pick. I went and saw this maybe a week or so ago, but I really dug it. It is called The Farewell. Have you guys seen the trailers for this? Yeah, this is like a... Yeah. a, a wait, actually, no. Uh, uh, so it stars Aquafina um, as a... a as a young woman who finds out that her grandmother in China uh, is about to die or is, is dying. And so the family concocts this this uh, wedding to get everybody together in one place before the grandmother dies, but they don't want to tell the grandmother. And uh, so it talks a little bit about um, kind of cultural differences between, you know, American, uh, I don't know, truth and, and uh, Chinese truth, right? The idea of telling someone they're gonna die even if they're not going to be able to do anything about it, uh, it's 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 very nice. Oh, do they do they do they all hide the news from her? Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Oh. They, I mean, that they concoct this wedding, this this Die. rushed wedding instead of saying like, "Hey, this is your big big farewell." Uh, and so it's based on a true story. It's written direct by Lulu Wang, and it's it's I really liked it. I thought it was it was really. Um, really sweet it has has very good has good funny moments and it's it's very strong and emotional uh and i think it's i think you can probably still catch it in theaters um uh the farewell yeah and this is a big dramatic turn for aquafina who has uh, primarily kind of done comedy stuff she was in crazy she was the wacky best friend in crazy rich uh asians and she right. was in oceans 12 or whatever so or yeah whatever the the female ocean one what was that? Uh, Ocean's Eight. Yes. Mm. Eight cents on the dollar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ocean's eighty percent. Uh, Aquafina's great in this, by the way. She's she's fantastic. Uh, she's yeah, that, that love seems to, see to be more all stuff. all the buzz is that this is a huge kind of like dramatic turn, and she and she kills it. Yeah. So. Farewell. And uh, my pick are one as uh, yeah reinforce boys so far very fun. Once upon a time in Hollywood, I loved the film loved the film so you know mileage may vary it's one of these things it's like mileage will vary on this movie i loved it uh, a couple other you know friends of mine who saw it who had loved it texted me right away to tell me they loved it friends of mine who you know weren't as in love with it did not so you know but i didn't have anybody you know <laughs> send me terrible texts about it uh my uh pick i guess something i've had fun with i haven't played much because in the middle of like finishing up a, a book project but on the quest, I think it's on other plat. Uh, it's on other platforms, I'm sure. Is Gun Club, which is a VR game where you play with guns and shoot guns and different kinds of guns, and it's semi-realistic in that you have to put different mounting brackets on the guns, different sights on the guns, and then you go into different environments to go test your guns and shoot your guns, and you know the 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 haptic and tactile aspect of it's pretty fun. So um it's kind of a i'm not a big shooter kind of guy but you know every now and then just to you know pick up a p90 and you know unload on some targets so is it mostly Relaxing. just like fighting against waves of enemies or is it yeah it's targets it's just targets, targets. and part of it is just you're trying to sort of figure out and customize your gun hmm. to you know what's the right for each situation you know sometimes you want distance sometimes you're going to need you're just going to have a bigger magazine because they're going to come at you faster mm-hmm it's a bit so, like doing it, uh, any of those racing simulators where it's about swapping out engines and brake pads. Yeah. And oh, yeah. At laser sights and scopes and stuff and bracket. You go to this gun shop and you fix up your gun with what you want. And they put you in different scenarios and they build through from like basic target ones to like World War II shooting at Nazis and stuff and all that. And the targets are all 2D. So they always look like 2D targets, versions of it. Mm-hmm. So it's not completely sociopathic. That's cool. Gun Club VR. It looks like it's on Steam too. So. Yeah. Probably get it on the Vive as well. Yeah. Nice. So, and, and again, if you're looking at VR, um, I have loved my Quest. My Quest has been the one platform I've played longer than anything else. It's a $400 thing, which, you know, it's not cheap, but considering it's an all in one complete VR system, um, and it's becoming like, I think, the fastest growing VR platform out there, uh, it's pretty exciting, pretty fun. Yeah. You know, you know. If you already have like a Rift or a Vive or something like that, it's not as big of a deal. But if you have a small space or you have to connect wires to your computer to use it and it's a pain in the ass, Quest is great. Quest is completely standalone, completely everything self-contained, connects to Wi-Fi, load your games in there, play it, and uh, you you know, define your boundary as wherever you want. And there's some really cool stuff coming out now too, like uh, demos of where you go into your apartment, your house or whatever, and you lay out a map line of your entire floor plan and games that will adapt and generate to fit that 
Mm. And, you know, basically it will convince you that you will walk down a corridor and you get into an elevator and you go up and you're back in your same spot, but it feels like a different place in your house mm-hmm. or it feels like a different place in the environment. So they're doing really cool stuff with like full, not just room scale, but house scale stuff. So. Very cool. Cool. It's cool. All right, gentlemen. It's been weird. We'll see you in space. Mm. Did, did we actually establish that space jail is in space, or it's just a jail with space? Oh, it's I think better. Mm, mm. It's in well, space. Hey, what? I'm not, I'm not planning on. I'm not fixing to find out because we're on the run now. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's get ready for after things in just a moment. Uh, if anybody needs a break, you can go do it now. Yeah. Oh. I think we're all pros here. Hey, does nobody? Does nobody need a break, Brian? Uh, we're all right. No, I'm I'm good. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Let's just roll. All right. Uh, then, are we gonna do? Are we gonna just be spoilery the whole time for Once Upon? I think so. Okay. Let's do. We can do like an open. I mean, I don't know. It's just a spoiler time. So we can do an opening. Can tell people. I'm like, I just spoil. Let's yeah. just go right into it. Okay. Very cool. Then let me pop this up on the screen. So I, you know, my my new realization is my spoilers may not be your spoilers, or your spoilers may not be my spoilers. Yeah. How many words? It's a period piece. What? <laughs> yeah. Alrighty then. Uh, oop, don't do that. All right. If you're good to go, then let's go in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Ryan Brushwood. Yo. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, I'm over here. Today, we're talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's latest, well, I mean, as we record this, you know, somebody we listen to a couple of years from now, we like, no, it's this, latest movie, and I'm just going to say right now, we're going to spoil it, we're going to spoil it, we're going to talk about spoilers, because a big part of this movie um, involves a fictional version of Hollywood, and we want to talk about that and don't want to ruin anything. If you have any interest in seeing this movie at all, stop listening. If you're on the edge about seeing this movie at all, I say go see this movie and then come back. Yeah. yeah. Worth seeing. All right. Let's go around. Let's talk uh, initial reactions. Who saw it first? Uh, I saw it Thursday, 4 p.m. I saw it Thursday, 5 p.m. I saw it last so, Bryce, night. So, you saw it, you saw it earlier because you're oh, on yeah. Central Time. Yeah, I guess so. Um, uh, you know, I, I went in not I, – I am not super familiar with Quentin Tarantino's catalog. I've, you know, I've seen some of the hits. Uh, but overall, I was kind of going in blind. I also didn't know much about the uh, Tate and Manson stuff. And uh, I walked out of that movie shaking my head. I had no idea what the point, like, you know, Brian's going to talk about the magic trick of this movie, but I I sat there and thought, why did I watch any of this? Um, I think they're in it. And it's crazy because I think there's good scenes. I think the plot points in a vacuum and in connection with some of some of some of them are good. I think the acting's great. I think, you know, it's shot very well. I like, you know, the, 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 you know, the emulating old time types of film. And, and, uh, I, I, I thought that there's very good stuff in this weirdly bad movie. <laughs> I don't know. That was, that was how I walked away from it. I, I will vouch that I, I can't remember the last time I was this close to just walking out of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Like I was checking checking my phone in the draft house, which is already a thing. But like I was, I was like, "Is this thing done yet? Are we gonna do anything? Are we gonna like?" That was the thing that frustrated me is that the whole crux of it was this alternate history ending, um, and I think even that was to a v- very questionable conclusion. Uh, because you just didn't feel that there was a dramatic tension there. It, it felt like it didn't. It, it felt like there are two things happening, right? Sharon Tate kind of having her 
well, not even having her last days because all of her stuff takes place six months before. But seeing a, a line of Sharon Tate and then seeing the the two interconnected lines of 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 uh, uh, Rick and the other guy, Cliff, Cliff, Cliff. Uh, you know, seeing their interconnected story, and then at the end, the whole point is that they kind of brushed up against each other and saved their lives but none of anything that happened before it really i mean it set up the characters it set up that they can fight and that they drink and that you know they have a flamethrower but uh i i just felt like we didn't go anywhere we didn't earn or do anything um, and so when, when you say that you're not familiar with the manson tate thing like because they uh, and and I don't know because I, I don't know where the separation of like the stuff I saw at the draft house is and like the actual movie, but the movie, it's feel I felt like the movie begins with a trailer for a Manson murder movie and then there was stunt rock right afterward. Was so, that the same thing? For you guys? Uh, I also arrived late, so I got I got in right as all the trailers were wrapping up. Okay, uh, so I didn't know house. that's a draft house thing. They didn't do it in every. Yeah, that, that that wasn't okay. in the theater. Oh, weird. Okay. Then yeah, then then I I thought that was part because it was after all the other stuff, so I didn't know whether or not that was a Tarantino looking to start the movie like with this little pastiche. Uh, mm -hmm. But that would be the only thing that I could have even thought of. Like, if you have no idea what happened uh, uh, when the Manson family came to uh, uh, Sharon Tate's uh, uh, house, it's one of the most grisly, violent. Uh, you know, certainly it's a, a murder that captivated the nation uh, and, and you know, had far flinging ramifications throughout Hollywood and, and America. Uh, then, yeah, like Ashley did not know about the Manson murders uh, and was like kind of scratching her head as we left the theater. And I'm like, oh, no, it's like this was an alternate. You, you get it sprung on you mm -hmm. that this is an alternate history where the Manson murders yeah. Never happened, and and now Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski well, are different people. Well, in this world, the Manson murders are when Charles Manson's followers got murdered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a self defense uh, yeah. tutorial of these people that come and try to murder. And uh, and so I, yeah. I tr I'm trying to like give the film some leeway because that's. Like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that going in, and that's clearly a crucial part of it, and clearly a thing a lot of people do know. Um, so I'm trying, like, I'm trying to see the good, and I think there's a lot of really good stuff in that. But I, uh, that that one thing, just uh, the the one thing it was just trying to bring everything together for, uh, it it didn't, it it felt, I don't know, I I just uh, yeah. Right. So, uh, I think well, the, Justin, go go with your take now. Yeah, You're you the second one to see it. So I saw it. I loved it. I thought it was uh, just just a, a a great character study. Um, it certainly is a self indulgent Tarantino movie. Uh, you know, we get not one but two elongated uh, foot shot for like no reason because Quentin Tarantino said so. Uh, that being said, it was just I don't know. I just love those characters. I, I I personally saw where you know the the story was going is you know there's. DiCaprio uh, coming to grips with kind of the the tribulations of his career and the possible ending of it. Brad Pitt, uh, who is like a really like kind of weirdly complex and like dark character because he's easily the most likable. And yet we just kind of get hung on us uh, a, a third of the way through the movie that he can't work because everyone assumes he murdered his wife and we don't really get anything else on that except it, it does kind of lead to an interesting interplay of the fact that like all right if he was saying that he was out of control or something accidentally happened uh yet he has this like uh amazing control over his dog and stuff like that but uh anyway i i i really dug it and i was like by the by the the final scenes of the movie i was definitely on the hook for two things number one uh, I've watched every Quentin Tarantino movie. That man is famous for his gore. He's famous for violence. He's famous for fetishizing it and putting it on, putting it next to a good soundtrack. And as we kind of build closer and closer to the idea, you know, we we, we get the kind of uh, the the cunning of the Manson family as uh, Brad Pitt goes and has his interaction on Spawn Ranch, and then. Uh, uh, we're we're getting closer and closer to what I'm assuming is just going to be a 
a vile Quentin Tarantino rendition of this gruesome, grisly, insane murder. Uh, and then our heroes saved the day. And I was uh, I was delighted by it. And and I, I just really, really, really dug it. I, I had a I had a great time. Brian, I think you saw it. Next. Oh, I saw I saw it last night. But uh, but but uh, I have a different take from both Justin and Bryce. Uh, I, yeah, I saw it last night at ten o'clock. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. So the um, uh, uh, you see that Andy Kaufman bit where he gets on stage and does a really really bad stand up uh, act that you just begin to pity him and you feel like what what are you even doing? Uh, and then and then he starts to do impressions and they're all bad and then um. And suddenly busts out uh, Elvis, and it's amazing. And the majority of the act was kind of garbage, and the only laughter was nervous laughter because it was bad. And uh, then at the end, it turns out he's like, "Got you, suckers!" And then uh, if if you, if you didn't know that who Elvis was or think it was very good singing, then I could understand why <laughs> you would think that was just a bad stand-up act. But if yeah. you knew who Elvis was, you're like, "Holy crap, that was pretty amazing!" Yeah. Uh, I hated my experience of the majority of this movie and it was only at the end where i was you know just bursting out laughing and, and the audience was was clapping and making noise because it was so outrageous and so far out there and it's only after i established the idea that he was on purpose doing an andy kaufman bit or pulling a magic trick that i went back and i was like okay i hated the random wedging in of Bruce Lee to no significant uh, uh, import and this scene that basically exists only to say that Brad Kick, Pitt, Pitt can beat up Bruce Lee. Um, but then, uh, by having seen the end, I was like, but that was really important to credibly set up amazing magical kung fu skills to grab a knife midway and all of the... Um, uh, you know, all of, I hated all of the Sharon Tate. Oh, doesn't she, didn't she deserve more life than she was granted? Look at that starry eyed doughy enthusiasm, you know, doe like enthusiasm for, you know, oh, what a lovely girl. I hated all that. It was boring and, 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 and didn't add anything. And, and it was like, we get it. We get it. It sucks that she's going to die. Uh, but after you get to the end, you're like, all oh, that was absolutely vital for us to be completely shocked. I hated I hated the fact that in the last 30 minutes, that randomly a narrator shows up and begins increasingly tediously counting down the minute by minute at the moment. I hated it. But again, that was important to, to get the gotcha of, of it being an alternate timeline or whatever. So if you think of it, the movie as a magic trick, it was a very good Kaufman-esque uh, magic trick. Um and you can make the case that everything that was there had to be there in order to get the punch at the end that we get. Uh, but having said that, uh, I I like the ending so much that uh, it makes me look past the torture of the first 80%. Now, do, do you think it's one of those things where you'll never watch it again? Or if you watch it again, you will enjoy these moments more knowing that they're building to something and not being frustrated by them laying themselves out? I suspect the latter, but I also suspect that given its length, I will never watch it again. Uh, but I will I, I will treasure the, the ending experience. I, I will say, in general, Quentin Tarantino movies, pro tip, just put them on your phone. Because they're in general, there's like they kind of cut themselves up into smaller acts or like in, in Pulp Fiction, they're literally their own little vignettes. They're just great when the Internet is is done and you're like pulling into landing. It's just like perfect little 15 minute, 20 minute uh, uh, moments because the movies are so gosh darn long. Um, I my experience was different. Um, and you know, it is what's, what's nice about going to see this with, with my girlfriend is I'm a guy that knows a ton of Hollywood history or thinks I know a lot, know a lot, know a lot, know about, you know, you know, you know, I think I read the Vincent Pugliosi book, you know, and Manson, all this stuff. So like, I know a lot about the stuff. And so I go into with that side of it of like, you know, I'm like, and I'm fascinated by, I live in Hollywood. I'm fascinated by this stuff. I know these locations and stuff. And so that's me, you know, my girlfriend, you know, she's just starting off with her interest in, you know, getting diving into films and stuff like that. And so she has a very, very, very different experience in that. And so we're, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, I, you know, I see the Bruce Lee thing. I'm like, Oh, I know what this event is actually about. It's not 
pulled out of completely thin air from Quentin Tarantino. I'm like, I know who the stuntman this is based upon. I know some of the background on this. I know these little details. So I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, I like the fact that Tarantino loved this part of the story or loved this or loved that. So that's my, you know, my point of view. And it's like, for me, the choices are like, oh, cool. He's going to do this story or he's going to do this. He's going to incorporate this into there. She's looking at it from very fresh eyes without that. What was your opinion? She's just, you've loved it. Yep. She loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Cause she's watching the performances. She's just watching the characters build and this thing build in front of her and the mythology happening for the first time for her. So that was, you know, that, so that, that's, you know, cause I could walk out of there going, well, if you know, if you read the book, then you appreciate this, which is not a way for everybody to enjoy a film. Um, yeah. I, there are Tarantino, like I, my 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 feeling. A lot of Tarantino movies are they're movies that I love, but there are these long lulls that drive me nuts. And then he does something brilliant that makes up for it. Um, and and so Brian, I see what you're saying there, but oddly for me in this one, there was never a lull. I every frame, every scene, every moment, I was loving it. Like you know, all the stuff that came before of watching, you know, the watching you know, the, the characters and their story. Cause I'm looking at like, you know, what is the, the Hollywood machine do, you know, you're on TV and you're famous. And then all of a sudden, you know, nobody cares anymore, or you're trying to struggle and you're going, you know, with the Rick Dalton character going like, what's next spaghetti Westerns. And we didn't know that this was going to be the big turnaround for Clint Eastwood. You know, we didn't know that that actually could be an amazing thing because for some people it wasn't. Um, I, 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 I I loved it in the moment that Rick Dalton opens up the 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 shed by the pool and I see the flamethrower sitting in the corner. A little part of me is going, hmm, check off's flamethrower. But I didn't know where it was going because it was it was getting towards the end where the Manson people showed up. I'm like, ah, now it's now the fun's gonna end. You know, now the fun's gonna end and we're gonna get to the bad part. And I love the moments of Sharon Tate because she was one of these people that all you hear is one of the peer that she was supposed to be this really sweet person. And we got the story where we didn't let them, you know, we'll get into the ending, but like, you know, we get to see her being young and being in Hollywood and the myth, the myth, but maybe the myth was real for her. And then it became a nightmare, but this story was different. So I was in love with the movie and I was actually dreading the end because what happened. And then when it happened, I'm like, oh my God, he glorious bastards this. And I yeah. loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. It's called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's, he tells us, it's once upon a time, you go back, you're like, oh, oh yeah. The narration thing, Brian, it was when he, the narration was at the beginning too, when they talked about the relationship between Dalton and Cliff, but it's it's sporadic and it's easy to sort of say, like, wait, you know, where did this yeah, come from? You're right. Now that you mention it, that 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 was in there. But but I guess it does speak to my feeling that that it it um uh it, Pacing was a bit. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to. I don't, no, don't want to criticize on technical points. You know, it's because uh, at the end of the day, you, you know, it's it, it was it was just too. It was it was unpleasant and boring for the vast majority of it. But I'll only remember that ending. I'll not remember. Uh, you know. Yeah, I I. I mean, like, cause like my, cause example, like, you know, like, like mine was opposite. Like, I loved that world building. I loved watching Dalton. I loved like, what is, what is a world that, you know, what is a day in the life of Cliff Booth? What is, cause like these people are going, what's next? Where does life go from here? You know, and that's the, the, the story of the Hollywood fade, you know, the, and it was absolutely, it was a fan, you know, Tarantino's love letter to what the idolized version while getting into some of the gritty version. And then, using myth making did give us a happy ending and i was curious like what did sharon tate's families and her sister you know her sister was effusive about the movie she loved the fact that sharon got presented in a very good light and the idea that the story ultimately wasn't about you know leaving it with the story of like then let's follow the murderers it's like no let's follow sharon tate on a happy day being a sweet person and whatnot and i'm like wow that's a it's I don't know if it's the right take. I loved it, enjoyed it, and it's what I love about it. It's a risky friggin' movie, and and I'll say nothing point to like what I liked about like you know some Spike Lee movies. Like if you ask me, like do I agree with the meta points? I'm like I don't know. Maybe it's a little too whatever. But in the reality of the movie, like Black Klansman, when you watch the sections and stuff, when you see them go to the Black Power movement, and all that, it's powerful. You're like oh shoot. You're like 
you're telling a guy who like me who has absolutely no understanding or experience of this you're giving me a very good reason for why this is meaningful and impactful to these people and i understand a little bit better you know you've, you've opened up my worldview and, and let me let me look through your let me see what you're trying to show me and that's what I love about Tarantino, because Tarantino could take a movie that I would go, ah, it's a crappy movie. Like, yeah, but look at this. This is what's really cool about this. This sequence right there, it's great. And I'm like, oh, oh, well, that is cool. OK. And and that's kind of I, I mean, I think the, the 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 big grand stroke with that ending is uh, set up in a moment after, uh, you know, uh, Tarantino or uh, uh, DiCaprio and Pitt see Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski go up to their house, you know, next door, basically. And he's like, like, ah, you know, like this is this is the reason why you have to live in Hollywood, because next door, you know, there's uh, the, the the director of Rosemary's Baby. And like, I could be a, a pool party away from my career being totally different. And then that end where it's like the pool party happens to be them foiling one of the most grisly, gruesome murders in history. And then he gets this validation of like, Oh my God! Like, is Cliff okay? And he's like, Oh, these like gigantic luminaries, these like shooting stars in Hollywood know and revere me. And now, like, we can like that's the happy ending. The fact that that's the happy ending, and now we can imagine that uh, Cliff gets more work, and and everything is is happy, and we've averted one of the most uh, awful uh, murders in American history. Is just like, wow, that's just kind of really clever uh, it was it was something that i really i felt emotionally kind of carried that weight of all those characters considering like all the time and i'm with you brian like there were moments that for me felt a little tarantino's doing this because he's tarantino and literally the only person that was ever able to tell him to keep his run times down uh, has now been me too'd into oblivion so he has nobody that is going to ever yell at him for uh, putting in or taking out anything that he wants uh, but everything on that side that I felt was indulgent kind of played into our final things. Like they played into our final moments of uh, uh, Cliff being super competent and, and DiCaprio being longing for this uh, this break beyond the break that he had. And we get everything. We get everything tied up in this like meta history shredding kind of finale which is uh you know it's it's i think if you think about like what do you want from a certain director like that's the kind of stuff that you want from a tarantino i i like in the surprise the, that's what i liked i had i'm so glad i had no idea that it gave us this alternate ending to it I, I loved that that happened and i didn't know that it was coming and then it happened and then i'm still trying to process this and go is this and I, i've talked about this before we did this the show is like there was a trailer out, not before this, but for another movie about Sharon Tate, which just tries to turn, you know, the murders into this like a horror franchise sort of thing. And it, and it just sounds so exploitive, just so not, hey, what what a loss this wonderful person was and her friends were. It's this let's just, you know, let's take this horrible event and turn it into, you know, put it on the level of I don't know. I mean, it just. That that bothered me, and then you know, I was curious to see this. We're like, oh yeah, we're gonna take this event at the end, and we're gonna do our own myth making with it. And the idea is like, let's just make the killers friggin' buffoons. Let's not watch you walk away and think now the story is about what happens to the killers. The story is about like, ah, oh, wasn't she great? Wasn't she? Weren't these people neat? Aren't they cool? And then when you reality sets in, it's like, what have we lost? You know, having having her watch actual Sharon Tate footage. It's brilliant. I mean, I love that because now, you know, you've got millions of people have now seen Sharon Tate doing fun physical comedy and get an idea of who she was by watching her real performances. I mean, that alone to me was a neat way to sort of say, let's let's talk about this this rising talent, what we lost. I loved yeah. that. I love I that. I mean, you do have to kind of peek around Margot Robbie's feet, but uh <laughs> Yeah, there's that. Uh, so one of the one of the gripes that uh, that Bonnie has in general is whenever is that so many movies when you have uh, young beautiful uh, women in there so often they're whether it's by direction or by their acting choices is just the starry eyed vacant uh, half smiling uh, look uh, Bonnie hates that and uh, I was there in the movie. 
and bored enough that when they got to that time, there was so much time of them depicting that that I had time to pull on my phone, snap a picture of 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 her of her starry far away look, and and text body, uh, uh, you would effing hate this movie. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I'm glad I'm glad she didn't go. I don't think she would have enjoyed it at all. Uh, well, but you know, it's it's I, I don't know. You know what? Uh, yeah, I don't know how to take on. You know. Because it is Sharon Tate had that sort of that quality to our guests and sort of thing. And like and, and like I said, the sister being happy with the movie and liking the portrayal was great. The Manson, the 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 girls, like you had some great friggin' performances there. Like friggin' creepy, like you know, I it was, was, was it was the most natural Lena Dunham performance I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, is she was there she was, the uh the underage girl? No, no, no. Lena no. Dunham of Girls uh, oh, was uh, the, fame. Uh, right. She, uh, was she the mama bear one or which she one? was? Yeah, not not the not the redhead that was inside with George Spawn, but she was the one that greets them. Uh, that's kind of like you, you find out is kind of playing quarterback on like. Oh, got it. Yes, I see. Gypsy. Yeah. 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 I mean, Dakota Fanning, all of that. I mean, it's yeah, just, Dakota Fanning was great. I mean, like, from she was just. She was great. awesome. And and I thought that would that was a great and that's you know, it's it, like you, you see that scene or that whole sequence of uh of Brad Pitt coming to the Manson ranch and everything and uh you you just like that's the scene that like I bought like a, a, totally if I would have ever thought like, oh, this might be some Tarantino playing around with history kind of thing, I was all in on like, okay, I know who the Manson family is. I know how uh, uh, competent they are. I know how dangerous they are. I know that they are uh, highly paranoid and motivated, and uh, uh, they would not hesitate to do physical damage and kill somebody to keep off the radar. But they're not very competent. Well, so. but so but I to the like so like the Hollywood history I knew. I'm like, oh damn. They did kill a stuntman who went there asking questions about Span. You know, like they did kill, like, and so I'm like, oh crap, are they going to do that with, with, so like, I'm like, for, you know, yeah. Brad Pitt's character was like an extra turmoil for me because I'm like, oh yeah, those were the other murders that don't get any attention were the other people they killed, including a stunt guy who was asking questions and stuff. I'm like, who they thought turned him into the cops, you know? So I was kind of like, oh crap. He's dead. I'm like, man, I, I'm gonna miss him. And then he drove off, and I'm like, oh wow, this they they're not doing that story. And then I didn't realize, Andrew, it, it's all gonna have a happy ending. Yeah, which I mean, I guess that's that is the kind of headline. The headline is Quentin Tarantino does a a, a Manson murder story with a happy ending. Yeah, <laughs> which uh, you know, it seems like a very Quentin Tarantino top line. Like. This is what my movie's gonna be, man. Like I'm gonna do a Manson murder movie with a happy ending, which sounds horrible on the surface because you're like, oh, you're gonna make them out, you're gonna mythologize them, make them look good, and it's like, yeah, no, 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 no. Besides, uh, it's also his like fan fiction theory of like how he could have saved Roman Polanski's career too. That it's just like, like, oh man, Polanski, great, what a great guy, <laughs> like what a br bright rising directorial star. Oh wait, what do you mean? Like, like uh, by by representing him so positively, it's a it's a current yeah, day effort I mean, to rehabilitate even, his image. Even reminding, yeah, even just reminding people that like, oh look, Polanski was this like icon, this like this rising star icon in in the world of film, and then not only does he have this unspeakable tragedy happens to him, but then everything that happens afterward that you know he is still unable to return to America because he hasn't faced his crimes. Uh, yeah, maybe I would say, but like that tragedy bought Polanski a lot more forgiveness and tolerance for the bad things he did. That tragedy I, I was. Agree. I agree. You know, so I don't know that if it had it not happened, it would have rehabilitated him as much as he probably would have had a bigger downfall sooner. Oh, no, no. I think Justin's saying this movie right now today is a sincere effort to say, hey, America, why don't we think a little more charitably about Roman Polanski today? Oh, no, no, no. no I don't think it, that it's that it's saying to our modern audience that that's that that should be happening. I'm saying that, like, in the same way that he can unwrite out the Manson murders, he can unwrite out history when it comes although they do they do lay the track of like hey look uh uh you know the the other best friend that was there at the sebring 
yeah, that that was there at the house is like he knows that Polanski's gonna screw up and he wants to be there when when it happens. So they do they do set up that Polanski's not this uh, you know, choir boy, obviously. You know, the the Damian Lewis uh Steve McQueen was great. Cool. Yeah, it was cool. Because like I'm like, it's like like fairly looks like Steve McQueen, but in that moment in that scene, he's a great it's a great Steve McQueen, you know, messed up hair and stuff, and then explaining to us what's I I I I loved it. I love that it was a very, it was a risky choice. It's a very, very, very risky choice to say in a big movie like this with stars like this to say it, it could have, and it's gotten, you know, some critics reading critics, it's divided as far as like, was this a good idea, bad idea, whatever, but bless Tarantino for like, you know, he had the 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 balls or the insanity, maybe more insanity to like, I'm going to rewrite how World War II ended. (laughs) Yeah. You know? And then he's like, and it's funny because I've heard people like defend that, like, well, that was okay there because it was just a di- different, like, what the Holocaust didn't like kill millions of people and, and Hitler wasn't a real, oh, I was like, you know, like to defend that and not this. It's like, if you're on board with him, like wiping out Hitler and stopping World War II prematurely in his fictional thing, I think you got to be okay with him, you know, wiping out this. Yeah, the one, the one thing that I would say is that Tarantino has made a, a, a point to say that he makes two kinds of movies and you should expect different realities from the real world movies that are about characters that should be taken as more realistic. And that's Jackie Brown and Pulp Fiction and, and Reservoir Dogs. And then there's the movies that he can that he's making that would be movies that those characters would watch. And that's the Kill Bill and Glorious Bastards. And this is mm-hmm. spends the vast majority of the movie as his first kind of real world movie since Jackie Brown and then ends with the kind of ending that we got in in both uh, in Glorious Bastards and to a, a lesser extent because it's not a famous thing, uh, uh, Django Unchained. I. One last note I'll point out is the detail they went into to recreate 1969 was incredible because they used a lot of real locations. They actually used, you know, uh, places, redressed, went back and put, you know, facades and, you know, I'm sure they probably did digital stuff too. And they had to for certain things, but I'd imagine. But so much of it was actually facades and stuff on, you know, newer buildings to make them look like the older versions, all of that. When she's in Westwood walking around, if you go there, that's a real place, whatever. I was just so impressed. And you know, you're sitting there watching this in you know a Burbank movie theater next to other people who were all just like looking at this world as you know, pits driving the car through town, and you're like, Holy crap, like it's amazing how good of a job they did in that. So uh all right, one last thought. So it's a movie by an established director about Hollywood that stars a bunch of A-list actors and did well at the box office. This has got to be Tarantino's like most Oscar Beatty movie of, of, of all time. And not to say that he made it like that, but just that in terms of award viability, it checks a lot of boxes that the Academy traditionally rules. I mean, I'm not going to say that it was a cynically targeted attempt to win an Oscar, but in an alternate reality, if somebody were to manufacture a cynically Oscar targeted movie, it would be indistinguishable from this one. Oh, no, no, no. I think that's La La Land. Like that's where where you're just doing like like oh no we're gonna do an old movie for old voters and we're going to ape this kind of thing, at the very least this yeah, movie Trumbo I was like Trumbo that's yeah, Trumbo that's because yeah. it's like let's tell you this even you know take a character who's maybe more flawed than we realize not show you but aren't we great 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 and not you know like I said the risk of like rewriting the Manson murders could have gone either way. Yeah, I mean, I think, and even the Hollywood stuff is like it doesn't, uh, you know, we we are happy because we like uh, DiCaprio that you know he survives, but uh, it's it's a fairly critical portrait of of an actor's uh, ego and and the kind of molly coddling that has to happen around it. But uh, I don't know. I, I think it's like uh, this will be interesting because as far as you know. Uh, far as i can tell and, and obviously we're getting we're like a month and a half two months away from like oscar movie season but i would i would not be surprised if this is nominated for a lot yeah i i thought 
the performances were fantastic. I mean, I thought, you know, was Leonardo doing what makes Leonardo great? You know, that that watching an actor, portraying an actor who could then act in a way that's different, like that was so multi-layered, you know, the, the things that were subtle, you know, about, you know, that the character has this stammer that he does pretty good job of covering up, but he does about to stammer, but he doesn't stammer. And then when he's alone and angry, he just mocking himself and that, and you realize, wow, there's a lot going on inside there. I just loved it. Loved it. All right. Well, we settled it. We were, I, yeah. I think I think our takes are pretty representative of how our audience is going to feel. I think that I think that it's oh, going to yeah. be, you know, like I have friends who I know who are going to be more like you know Brian and Bryce and and how they feel about it, and and that's kind of I haven't seen Hateful Eight yet because like that trailer bored me. Like I I'm like <sighs> bunch of people in a small contained environment talking. Least favorite. I'm not I'm not a Kill Bill fan. Not a Kill Bill fan. You know, like Tarantino. Like sometimes I'm like I love it. Sometimes I'm like people love some of his stuff, and I'm like not for me. This is not what I want. So like Brian, like I'm I'm you in some of his other stuff. So <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, uh, Hateful Eight is I think probably the least accomplished of the movies that he's done. It's basically just a. Uh, it's it's like an all star game with all the gravity and weight of of an all star game where it's like the stakes really don't matter and this is basically just a script where he's like oh let me just cast all the people that have been in other movies of mine that I really like and we're just gonna give them this like scenery chewing uh, dialogue and they're just gonna go and so if you're a fan of Tarantino movies I think you'll enjoy it but uh, Hateful Eight to me I mean his worst movie is Death Death Proof. But uh, Hateful Eight is probably the most, uh, you know, the, the least of consequence to see. But you see him like he took, I was saying, like Zoe Bell and Kurt Russell from Death Proof and then kind of put him into versions of those characters in a way into here. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. That was that was a fun, a fun moment is, uh, you know, I don't know. Kurt Russell is always great. And I, I mean, for for however superfluous the narrator was, I thought, you know, that's another Tarantino favorite move is like. Hey, famous friend, just do this narration for me. What would what I think would be cool uh, if you're a Holly, interested in Hollywood mythology? I would love. I mean, Tarantino really doesn't do like like director's commentaries or stuff. Does he? like I would love to see a breakdown in there because it's like there are so many references in here that I got, but I know there's so many more that I didn't get. You know, like when you had. You know, Cliff Booth, the flashback of him on the boat with, you know, his wife, Rebecca Gayhart, you know, just nagging, nagging, nagging him. And she's like, well, my sister Natalie said that you're no good, da, 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 da. Allusion to Natalie Wood dying right. off of a boat with Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken and that mystery of what happened and stuff. And like little things like that. I'm like, shoot, what else do I not know? Because, with, you know, Tarantino, it's like, I, mean, I it agree. Looks an inch it's deep, it's so a mile dense. Deep. Every scene, so many references, <laughs> every frame. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like one of like, like the weird little, and I, I think for, for Tarantino, that's like the little flaw that makes the character is like, you just really love Brad Pitt and you're rooting for Brad Pitt and you're like feeling bad when he can't get on the, 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 the set. And then it's like, Oh, yeah. Like, it's just one of those things in Hollywood that it's like, oh, whatever happened to uh, Mike? Why isn't he working? Oh, uh, he probably killed his wife. We don't know. Moving on. Who's ready for lunch? I, you know, like I said, it's, it's good. Like, I liked back getting asking my girlfriend who's these references are all new to her and to have her go like, well, what did you think? And she just loved it because she just looked at it for what was on the screen and not the story that like I brought in with me. Like, well, I hope they get into this. And if they do that, I will check this off on a list, you know, which yeah, it's probably the way I, you know, view some of these things. Yay. I know that thing. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, cool. Any picks? Uh, I, I continuing to enjoy uh, pessimists archive. It's a great podcast. I don't know that. 
Uh, oh, uh, uh, we talked about it. It was a previous pick. Maybe it was the week you were out, but it's um, mm-hmm. uh, the story of uh, all these fairly uncontroversial things nowadays and how they were all hated when they first came out. Demonized stuff like the waltz, the novel, uh, uh, the Irish, <laughs> the Walkman, uh, like like they, they, they did uh, chain stores, electricity, like they just uh, nobody knows oh, how to wow. process. So the first thing they do is they hate it. Yeah, and so they, that was, they, you know, I had this conversation with uh, it was Tom Merritt were at like uh, one of the uh, the sword and laser meetups and the conversation brought up about like how somebody brought up but it was a good point it was about like hey like you know the, these you know these heads of these tech companies you know they're they t- they don't let their kids you know have much screen time you know and they limit their screen time I'm like well you know like Apple limits you know, has divide you know has software to limit screen time all that but I'm like we don't know that screen time is bad <laughs> you know like we we, you know, we call it screen time because we might as well call it electricity time. You know, do we good or bad? You right. Know, or, or connected to other humans time. <laughs> that was the case I made. I said I went home and the fact that I read a book, was that better than hopping online and talking to six friends and developing relationships and friendships? I don't know. Yeah, uh, you'd really enjoy Pessimist's Archive. One of the one of the tropes that he does is uh, he gets people who host podcasts celebrating these things to read the quotes from 100, 200 years ago, demonizing them, which is a fun twist. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. Cool. Heroin. Yeah. yeah. That's a future yeah. episode. Let's see if we get to it in there. Cool. Anybody else? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, my pick's in the movie. That's pretty much all I watched over the weekend. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't have a second pick this week. It's hard to do two things in a week. <laughs> <laughs> so hard to pick one thing out of the infinite world of media we've consumed. Uh, to say. Okay. I, 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 I passed on it too, Bryce, but I will pick on you because I'm that guy. Uh, la- last week I talked about Slay the Spire, and I think Slay the Spire is still a really fun uh, single-player card game, and it's, uh, it's pretty fun. It, let me tell you what, picking up on earlier picks is a good thing because mm-hmm. sometimes like, hey, I love this thing. But coming back, I'm like, hey, I still love this thing is is valid because that's when I started to go, huh, you know, it's mm-hmm. interesting. Sure. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, Slay the Spire. It's uh, it's a good uh, single player card game. And uh, uh, it's it it makes you really think about like deck building when it comes to uh, these card games. Uh, and it lets you do some wacky stuff because it's a roguelike, so you'll play for 30 minutes at a time and have to start over because you died. So, uh, yeah, it's on the PC, and it's on the Switch. It's really good on the Switch, too. I I decided I was going to try to uh, go rewatch some of the, DC, the Snyder DC films to sort of, like, allow time and distance and all that to kind of go do it, and it took me about a week to make it through Man of Steel, um, and I, I got past all the things that annoyed me. Cause I, you know, that, that list was already in my head, you know, like that, that was there. Like I already got past what was annoyed me. And I said, what, what, what do I like about it? Um, and you know, I thought like, man, there are some really cool visuals in here. There are some really cool visuals or some cool, cool things there. Um, so I, I made it through the end and I liked and I think my favorite part of that was like the Krypton stuff, you know, like I liked I'm like, yeah, I still kind of dig the Krypton stuff. It's like I, I would have watched a, a whole prequel if only somebody did like a whole series that was I mean, more like that than I guess what we have with Krypton. But I dug that. I actually dug that part, you know, and, and I just wish we spent more time with the Kryptonians when they came and showed up instead of just like, hey, I'm here. I'm Zod. Give me Superman. <laughs> and now we're going to have we're going to punch each other, which is like, all right, the, the frustrating. But there were parts I liked. And I said, OK, let me go watch. There's the Batman versus Superman extended cut. Let me let me go back and try that. Hmm. Let me guess, it was not good. I couldn't make it. I Brian, I'm like I'm like ten minutes in, fifteen minutes in, and I'm like I can't. I just I can't. I get you know, get longer sequence of Jesse Eisenberg and his character, and I and I see now the difference between his character there and Zuckerberg and stuff. You know, and him as an actor, he's fine there, but. It's not, I don't like him, it's not compelled by it, it's not, it's just, to me, I couldn't, I couldn't. So I went and watched Zombieland, my girlfriend, again, and hadn't seen Zombieland in years. We loved Zombieland, it was, Zombieland was fun, great fun movie, and then next day, wake up, check my RSS feed, what? 
What? Wait. What? What about Zombieland? Yeah, Zombieland Two, right? Double tap. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. So there you go. Did they ever favorite. make that Amazon Zombieland series, or was that just a pilot? Because I feel uh, like I've been pilot, and then and then uh, homie got all pissed off on Twitter and oh. uh, like lit into fans or something about it. So that's all I. Remember. It got weird. But yeah, I think that was when Amazon was doing the whole like uh, pilot season. Vote on vote on the pilots. They were like, like crowdsourcing the like, hey, do you like this? We'll make more. It's a horrible idea because. In a world where you can, you look at how many times do we, you make your way through the pilot and then it gets better two or three episodes in because that's when executives start to let, you know, them do their thing. Sometimes it's finding your footing. Sometimes it's like fighting, getting past the arguments of what the show needs to be and letting the show be the thing it needs to be. And then it gets really good. And so, you know, it was frustrating. So anyhow, looking forward to it. Yeah. Cool. All right, gentlemen been after Woo! hey there we go hey good shows all right i gotta run and do show prep yeah we gotta go get ready for cord killers coming up in a couple hours we'll have a uh, special guest jason howell Woo! Be on the show that'd be fun uh, awesome so, uh justin got a stream coming up not till tomorrow, Not but till we tomorrow. got an early night attack. Uh, we're, I'm live streaming the debates. That's right. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, Andrew, Friday. Friday. Friday, Friday. Friday. Andrew Main, Check Ghost out. Diver. Ghost Diver with mm-hmm. Andrew Main and how I became a ghost. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have a good night, yes. everybody. Oh. We'll see you later. Bye. Got to let it go sometimes I know some days we all cry We break down, yeah we